All right, well, today I'm going to show you how to install one of my builder's kits. So I've already kind of staged a few things here just to save some time on this video. Uh, but I got the boards, and the first thing you want to do is just lay the boards out how you want to have them. And you can see what I've decided to do is I've got my two expansion boards here. Uh, when you get the, the kit, you'll kind of have the power supply mount on the back here and a power cable you can run underneath it and plug it in right here. That'll come from the 12 volt power supply. You'll have another 12 volt power line that you can run to one of the expansion boards and then a kind of a jumper line. And you can run this jumper line from, uh, from either expansion board, the plus or minus here or the plus or minus here. And while this is could be used for a, a input, to the motor. You can also use it as an outboard. It's just an easy way to jump our power. So that's what I did there. And probably that's the trickiest part is figuring out how to route these uh, ribbon cables. So one thing you'll see I kind of like sometimes you can just kind of fold them at corners so that they kind of hold their place like that. And and then you can run them underneath some of the cables. So I haven't mounted these yet but I just kind of, like I said, I placed them how I want them. So what I've got going on here is my output for my main board or the, the expansion uh, cable input goes to this first expansion board so it kind of goes under it and then back up here and then this one is the uh, this this cord here is going to go into the second expansion board so this is my first expansion board this is my second expansion board this one is going to be routed to the buttons so I've got the 16 channel output going up to my buttons which I have not mounted yet but I my button board is probably going to mount right about there. Okay, and you can see it. You know, without any like special routing uh, hardware or anything like that, it looks pretty clean. And you know, we'll continue plugging everything in. So I got kind of that all set up. My shaker motor. Uh, I decided I'm going to put that right about here, like this. Okay. I actually recommend you do the shaker motor um, so that it's so the shaker weight is going to shake this way. It's a better experience if the table kind of rattles back and forth because you're going to have your hands on it and then it's going to rattle like that. So that's a good idea. And then, you know, I'll plug that in up there. And once you kind of have everything figured out from a board perspective where everything's going to go, then you just mount everything down. So I'm going to grab, I got a drill. I got some spacers here. So this comes with these little, these little spacers. And you just basically put it in place. Make sure your screw is going through the spacer. And then you can mount it right to your cabinet. It's good to go. Another spacer. <coughs> and I'm just going to do this on all of them. I just kind of slide the space underneath to get the screw to go inside the spacer. So that's in place. And then you can kind of try and get it so it's square. Mount it. <clears throat> now this one, of course, you have to use the spacers because I've got cables running underneath it so I don't squish this, the cables. For the other boards, you really don't actually have to use spacers because there's nothing underneath the boards except for just the traces and the <coughs> and the uh, just some nubs from the soldering. That's really it. So, yep, that board's on there. All my cables are on there. You see, the cables are still nice and loose, so that's good. And uh, this guy isn't mounted yet. I'm not going to bother with that. <clears throat> Comes with all the spacers for you, so it's a pretty simple thing to do if you do want to use them. Like I said, you just put them on there. <clears throat> Get the screw inside the spacer. And then go ahead and mount away. This is an MDF cabinet that I've got right here. So you do have to be kind of careful 
when you're mounting the screws. Some people would probably prefer to drill out a hole first so that you don't... On a wood cabinet, it wouldn't matter. You could just drill the screw right into it without any risk of doing any damage. But on these MDF cabinets, there is a risk that <coughs> you might strip the wood out. So just be careful not to get it too tight or else that could happen. In most cases, though, that's not going to be a problem unless you're really aggressive. You see I'm not going too crazy. I'm just going to put two screws on that one. Again, just to save time, I'd pipe it all four of them normally, but in this case, it's just easier to do it that way. So I got that mounted. I got to mount my button board. I'm going to do that. button board right where I want it, probably close to all the buttons. There we go. In this one I'm not going to bother putting the spacers on. Like I said, it's completely up to you on some of these boards. It's not going to make a difference it's against the wood. There's insulation and everything. So as long as you don't mount it really tight, I don't know. <clears throat> traces are going to be just fine. But again, like I said, up to you. It's probably better to use the spacers, but for the sake of time, I'll just mount it right on there like that. Yeah, see, the spacers are nice because they will keep it from... Put a little bit of stress on the board there. It's mounted pretty tight. Now it's good though. Perfect. <clears throat> got my button board mounted. And now I gotta get my flippers boards on there. So I think I decided. Let's see how this how this is gonna go. So B plus. This guy will go right here. I'm thinking about mounting these like right, right next to the buttons there. That'll make all the cables pretty easy to to run up there, and easy to mount too. <clears throat> yeah, these are probably the most difficult ones to mount on there because they're small and. <clears throat> But it's still not too tricky. Whenever you're doing this, you'll definitely want to be cognizant of where all your stuff is going to be when you put your cabinet back in. Yeah, see, these are tough. There we go, got it. Whew. There. That's good though. Because <clears throat> as you see, I'm putting this guy here, and I know though that the, the cover plate that I put on top of here is, is completely flush, so I'm not going to run into any problems putting it like that. But yeah, it's just something you want to be thinking about, because if you're not thinking about it, then you might mount something, and then all of a sudden you'll be like, oh man, I just realized that you know my plunger is going to be in the way of that, or or something like that. So it's just always like, before you mount it, be thinking about where things are gonna go. There we go, that is good. And I can even plug them in now. <clears throat> and the last one. <sighs> so. It's gonna go on this side over here. Now this one I'm a little leery about because there's a lot of wires going to these flipper boards and I got my plunger there. So once again, I'm going to be thinking about that. Are my wires going to hit? If they do, it's the plunger is far enough off to the side that I'll be able to pretty easily, I think. <clears throat> I 
move things out of the way. Like that. Another one. And I hope you're not uh, bored just watching me put this thing together. But I kind of thought it'd be good to do a whole video. I've had people ask me for one. And <clears throat> it also kind of shows if you think about how long doing this on your own would take. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but probably not much more than 30 minutes or so. So you're going to see how you can put it together an entire, I mean, this is a full-blown, you know, feedback system in just a few minutes, really, which is, <coughs> I think, pretty cool. And obviously, I'm a little more familiar with this than you probably will be, so it might take you a little longer. But again, it's just kind of cool to see how it all can go together so quickly. Um, and one thing you'll notice too, this plunger, this is my old style plunger, but it still works. I didn't have a, another plunger made on hand, so I figured I took this out of a, an old cabinet I have actually too. So I figured, hey, I'll use the, the old style plunger. Doesn't really matter. It works just fine. All right, so we got that. I think the next thing to do is my buttons. So I'll get going on those, I guess. Let's see here. So we'll start with the RGB buttons. Those are the worst. There's so many wires on them. <clears throat> we'll need them on the ends here. So again, the nice part about the way that this button kit works is you're not daisy chaining anything. You know, all the wires are there for you, and you can just put them in. And this is how they come out of the box. So, like, the plugs are on there for you. <laughs> Let's see. These are going to be my magnet save, so I want it on B2. So I look for B2 on here. It is labeled B1, B2, yeah. So here's B2. Plug in my RGB line. I needed my, my actual button line itself. Now this, I'll probably want to clean this up with a zip tie or something, because it's just a little bit of extra wire with these. RGBs, but I'll worry about that in a second. Get the next one on here. <clears throat> Put that guy through. Again, I just love how easy these buttons are. If you've ever watched, sometimes people are soldering things, doing crimp connections on all these things. Everything comes together, all wired and ready to go. So all you gotta do is plug it in. It's going to be a little hard to see there. Let's see here. There we go. Plug that guy in. That guy go right there. All right, so those guys are done. Yeah, not too crazy about how that looks, but like I said, it's pretty easy also to, to clean this up pretty quickly. Sometimes I'll just take these wires, <coughs> wrap them around themselves, if I can just figure out how they can wrap around themselves. Just like this, and then get a little piece of tape, which of course I don't have on me, <laughs> or a zip tie, whatever you have handy, I suppose. I'm going to use really cheap scotch tape, which is probably not ideal for this, but uh, I'd rather use a zip tie in this case. But you know, it's what I got handy. It's what I used to wrap a lot of my bubble wrap with. So I'll just take that. Wrap it on here like this and do it on the other side here too. Okay. Hey, it's not perfect, but that looks a lot better than it did, that's for sure. <clears throat> could even maybe, you know, if you wanted to really uh, make it clean, you could get one of those tie straps that you screw onto the side of the cabinet and just put it like that. And then all your, all your wires will be nice and tied up and right on the side of the cabinet there too, which we might want to do on this other side where we got the, the plunger. But let me get my other RGB buttons going. Set these guys here. If 
if any of you actually watch this whole video, I want to hear from you. <laughs> so leave a comment down there if you end up watching this whole video on setting this thing up. I'll be impressed because I understand this is a lot to watch me just work on a pinball machine here. <clears throat> but again, you know what? If you bought my kit, then this will show you everything you need to know on how to assemble it from a hardware perspective anyway. Maybe someday I'll do the, the software piece too. It's There's lots of videos on configuring DOF though, so you know, hopefully you'll be able to find those. All right, so these guys, now let's see here. One of these is my, got my, my flipper button here. Yeah, that's the one closest. And that's gonna be B1. So look for B1, there it is, B1. That guy, and right here, and then B2 is over here, and down here. <clears throat> so, just need to find my plus, making sure. Yeah, the yellow wire goes to the plus on there, so I plug it in the right place. And see, here's where ah, there's all these wires. That's gonna be a problem, right? I knew that was gonna be a problem, though. So now I just need to do something about it. And <clears throat> I don't have anything really super handy on me right now. So I'm going to have to, first of all, I'm going to kind of get these wires into a lace where they are. Oh, by the way, too, you know, if you want to be really, you know, a perfectionist about it, you can take the time. I do have screw terminals on all these boards. So you could cut these wires, these RGB wires that are pretty long, and as well as the as the, the flipper wires that are pretty long. Instead of plugging them directly in there, look at me, I'm just sitting here playing around this thing, and I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> okay, here they both are. Got it. I'm going to spin them around here, coil them up, there we go. <clears throat> and so you could shorten them up and then strip them and connect them back in there and end up making a, you know, a nice short run. Which, in this case, where you got the plunger right here, might not be a bad idea. However, since I'm trying to make a video that isn't another, you know, that, that process could take, you know, 20 minutes easily. I'm trying to make this video somewhat short. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to put it together as best I can. And uh, and hopefully, you know, give you some ideas along the way for what you could do to make it work a little better. So here we go. That's almost, almost perfect right there, actually. And I got this little... I don't know if you can see what I'm doing over here. It's probably a little hard to see. I'm, that's like right on the edge of the... Got this little gap here that I can put the wires into. And then for these guys, I can actually bend them a little bit. Do you want to be careful? They're not touching each other, but they're not there. And then these ones too. And... Just like that. I'm all good. Wires aren't touching. They're close, but it's good. All right. I'd probably want to do that a little bit better if I was doing this for real. But for right now, that looks nice. It actually looks really nice. And when I look at that from down in there, it looks like a pretty clean cat. All right. Let's do the rest of these buttons real quick. These ones are a lot easier than the RGBs. Nothing to do with these guys. So just run them in. Put them in here. However you may see fit, whatever colors you want to use. Let's see, I should probably do a green one for my plunger. Uh, coin one, I usually like to use a, a white one for the, for the coin. Maybe I'll have another green one under here. And then I got two more. I'll do a blue and a blue. They're all in there now. Now it's just a matter of screwing them in. Got my screw terminals here. There we go. 
<clears throat> Another screw terminal. A few more up here. Look at this, I'm getting close. All right, all my buttons screwed on. Now I just have to plug them in. So where do I plug them in? Well, it doesn't really matter. As a matter of fact, I don't even care where they go. I just plug them all in and then I worry about it later. Now you may want to do it differently and you are definitely allowed to do that. But for this, I'm not gonna put a lot of thought into it. I'm just gonna plug them all into different slots here because I can always figure it out in software what button goes where. But again, you're just going to see how nice this is. It's just what I love about it. And look at that. All my buttons are wired up, and it looks great. It really does look amazing. So, And if you've ever done a pinball machine and uh, seen how long it takes to do buttons typically, then I think you'll be pretty happy with just seeing that just now. So let's see, I gotta do my shaker. So I said my shaker was gonna go right here. So I'll do that one. I got some screws for that shaker. These screws are like the, they got some thick threads on them so that your can it doesn't get shaken apart. Even like MDF wood should be fine with these. Although that's up to you if you want to do something more aggressive. But I've never had an issue even with the MDF. They're pretty long screws and they got thick threads, so it should be fine. I wish I had a little more light. It's like working in a black cabinet. Even though this, even though my basement's pretty well lit, it's never easy working in an all black cabinet. All right, so that guy's good. Plug it in there. Excellent. All right, so yeah, I'm almost done. I got uh, got to do my uh, plunger. I got to plug that in. I know I had some wire for it somewhere. I might have to find that later. I don't want to waste your time looking for the plunger wire. And I got to do my solenoids. So now for the solenoids, I've got <laughs> these guys here. I think I'm just going to mount these here. Okay. Screws should already be in them. You know. So all you got to do really is just screw them into the side of your cabinet. Alright, so I'm going to put those right about there. I want them pretty close to the. Pretty close to my flipper buttons. There we go. I want to make sure they're nice and tight against the cabinet, which I just did. Okay. And these ones too. Now these ones I knew. I had checked this before. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but they're really, they're actually just, they hit the plunger just slightly. I think actually my newer plunger they wouldn't hit, but this older one they do a little bit. But thankfully it's, I can just put it a little tiny bit lower. Should be just fine. 
Let's do that guy in. Next guy. And then I'll do these ones. So now for these guys, typically you would actually have them kind of across the cabinet and then in the back across the cabinet. Uh, and th for this cabinet, I'm just going to mount them on the sides. You can do it either way. Um, but for ideal placement, you'll have kind of a, a left mid, a mid mid, and a, and a right mid. And then in the back, you'll have a, a back left, back right, and back mid. And that's for ideal placement. I, mm, this is a smaller cabinet, it's a 32 inch. It's up to you. Mounting them on the side, it's still going to sound great. So I wouldn't worry about it either way. Like I said, it's up to you. Uh, this cabinet is actually just barely not long enough. You could actually turn these sides off and maybe move the solenoid, you know, over just half an inch and then you could fit it right against the side and then it'd be pretty easy to do. But just for the sake of, of uh, having this complete for y'all, I'm just going to mount them right on the sides and trust me, it'll still sound great like that. guy on the side here I'm not doing anything special here I think if I wanted to be a perfectionist I'd probably check the height of these and make sure they're not at the same level but again you know what I did a pretty good job they're almost perfect so I got those now I just got to plug them in so I've got these plugs that came with it this guy goes here and I'm just going to go ahead and... Alright, so now if you want to follow what DOF is, okay, my left three are going to be the first one and two. My right, or left two, so these ones here are one and two. These two are actually going to be six and seven. So I have a config file that I put out there, and you can use that config file. So this will go to six and seven. Now the only problem with that config file in this setup is that it's for the solenoids going this way, along the back and the right. This will still work, but uh, you'd probably want to change your DOF config a little bit if you went with this exact setup. <clears throat> Simply so that your all your left solenoids you know, are on this bar and all your right solenoids are in this bar. So here's my one, two. Okay. And you know, you might decide to route these wires a little differently, but you'll see it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Alright, so now these are my left, so my left are going to be these ones here. Plug these guys in. Right there. And then these are my other ones. And these guys go right here. Again, you might, you know, you can definitely clean these wires up if you want. But the cool part about it is that it's really pretty clean even without doing any cable management at all. And then I just have my plunger, which I found that wire that was sitting down there. So last, my plunger plugs in there. And it's going to run right up to here. And that, that's it. So I believe the whole thing is plugged in, hooked up, ready to go. Oh, one more thing. That's right. Can't forget the light bar. I did forget about the light bar, but you shouldn't forget about the light bar. Uh, where am I going to put the light bar? Well, <clears throat> of course, you can put this thing wherever you want. For this cabinet, it's just going to go right up here, and then I'm going to run this cable down, and right over here. And that goes into the 16 channel output on the other expansion that I mounted there. And uh, you didn't see the light bar, but that's where I put it, right there. Right there, if you, didn't see, if you can't see it easily. It sits nicely right there. 
All right, well, so you just watched me install that. I don't know how long that took. Let's see, 30 minutes exactly, so I called it right in the beginning. So you watched me do a full uh, pinball install in 30 minutes on my one of my extreme kits. This is the biggest kit I sell, actually. And it looks pretty nice in there, too, right? Pretty impressive for a 30 minute, 30 minute install job. So I hope you all uh, learned a lot through this, and hopefully this will help you if you get one of my kits, install everything, and get it going. And until next time, everyone, I'll see you later.